Hello. Why do I do that? Every single time I go to start trying to fucking film this, I pull the knife out. Am I even using this today? No. It's a no knife recipe. Do I still have it? As a microphone? Yes. Yes, I do. Hi. For those of you that don't know, my name is Johnny and welcome to Spooky Sunday Dinners. I don't know how to edit and I really wanted there to be like, like it says that when I go like this, like I, Spooky Sunday Dinner. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to edit this. I'm filming it on my phone. I don't even have a camera. I might not even edit it. I might just fucking throw this shit out there. Be like, hey, bloopers and all. Spooky Sunday dinners, spooky Sunday dinners, spooky Sunday dinners. I can't afford a theme song. I did buy this mic though. It's a little ASMR. I won't do that again. I don't like ASMR. Do you like ASMR? Don't even tell me if you do, because I don't. Anyway, this is <laughs> spooky Sunday dinners. Now, I probably posted something about this on Instagram. I don't know yet. I don't even know if the world will ever see these. Maybe they'll go on YouTube. I don't know how to upload things on YouTube, so probably not. But maybe I posted like a little thing that was like, hey, this, I'm doing this. You're probably thinking, why the fuck are you doing this? Well, I have a weird amount of knowledge about true crime. You probably know that by now, if you've ever talked to me. And I need somewhere to put it. So it's going to go right here into my food because I also kind of know how to cook. And one thing I've noticed watching your stories on Instagram is that you don't. It's a little weird. But I guess I'm gonna be here to tell you like, you need more garlic, you need less rice. A lot of you are cooking your eggs too hot. It's weird. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm doing this. You can watch it. You can not watch it. My mom's probably going to watch it. That's it. I don't know. Some really quick disclaimers. Hi. Um, number one, uh, these are not professional recipes. There is uh, no nutritional facts or anything that's going into me cooking this. I'm just making what I feel like making that day. If you cook this and you don't like it or you fuck up and get sick, it's not my fault. I'm not telling you that this is good. In fact, I'm telling you that this is mediocre. Two, we're gonna be talking about spooky shit while we cook. That's what this is. True crime, mostly. So, true crime, it's not fucking rainbows and unicorns. It's weird and it's spooky and it's dark. Do I make jokes about it to cope with the fact that I have an obsession with something so dark? Yes. Is that gonna offend some people? Probably. So before you comment or send me an angry email that this story has offended you, I don't give a fuck. Channel it. Write it on some toilet paper so it doesn't go to waste. I don't know what to tell you. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Don't be a Karen. You know what I don't like? Karens. Fuck off, Karens. Okay, so this week, we are going to be making barbecue chicken sliders. Now, this is gonna be kind of interesting because I don't eat meat or dairy, and the two main ingredients in this are meat and dairy. So, I'm gonna be making this and not tasting any of it. Now, maybe you're wondering, Johnny, is this food gonna to go to waste? No, my boyfriend needs both meat and dairy. So, I guess we will call these segments where I can't eat it Ooh, hashtag dinner for Doug. His name is Doug, I didn't just like make up that name. Could you imagine? Dinner for Bob. No, his name's Doug, it's dinner for Doug. You're welcome. I'm not gonna be able to taste any of it, so it's gonna be really interesting. Now, while we do that, I'm gonna be telling you the amazing, one of my favorite true crime stories. Some people say that she's a serial killer, others say that she's just the ultimate bitchy Karen. We're gonna talk about Typhoid Mary. The reason we're going to talk about Typhoid Mary is because I've called a bunch of you Typhoid Mary and it's really sad that you don't know why I'm calling you that. You're a Typhoid Mary. Let me explain why. So first things first, I'm going to tell you what ingredients I'm using before all of this starts 
as I'm using them, maybe I'll put like some words up what I'm doing. I don't know yet. I don't know yet, okay? I don't know what you want from me. I'm trying my best. Step one, I've got a boneless, skinless chicken breast in a pot of water, and I'm gonna bring that to a boil. Now, while I bring that to a boil, I'm going to add salt, pepper, and garlic. Now, I know what you're wondering. Johnny, if it's going to a boil, are the seasonings really that necessary? You know what? Yeah, because I want to. Am I gonna season it again after it's boiled? Probably. I like a lot of seasoning. I don't know what to tell you. We are also going to need a shit ton of sharp cheddar cheese, as many King's Hawaiian rolls as your heart fucking desires. And the number one thing I think is so important on any barbecue sandwich, some delicious kosher dill pickles. Are we gonna slice them up because I didn't buy pickle chips? Yes, we are. Now, could we have made a slaw to go on these? Probably. Do I like coleslaw? No. Do I want to make a coleslaw? No. If you want to make it, fucking remake these and put a slaw on it and tag me in it. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not doing it. I don't like it. That's that. I'm also drinking a green smoothie because it's 5.30. This is the first thing I've consumed in my body today besides coffee. Time is not real. I've got my chicken in my water. We've got a shit ton of salt a shit ton of pepper, and even more than a shit ton of garlic powder. And when you think you have enough garlic, you don't have enough garlic. I'm noticing that with a lot of you. Fucking put garlic in your shit, all right? Now, we're gonna bring this to a boil, and then once it's to a boil, we're just gonna keep it boiling for 25 minutes. In the meantime, we are gonna get into the story of Typhoid Mary. So, it's the summer of 1906 on Long Island's Oyster Bay. You don't know what that is? I didn't either. This spot was like the spot for New York's rich and famous. Just to like put it in perspective, fucking Teddy Roosevelt had his summer White House there. This was like the fucking place to go. Oyster Bay. If you know about it, congratulations. I didn't, I'm from New Mexico. I can't help you. So there's a banker there. Now when I say a banker, he's a fucking banker for New York City's most elite. And he's vacationing there, right? All hell breaks loose when six of the 11 people in that vacation home come down with typhoid fever. Ooh, spooky, typhoid fever. Um, yeah, I know what you're wondering. What the fuck is typhoid fever? Well, listen, let me tell you what the fuck typhoid fever is. Typhoid fever is a bacterial disease that's usually spread through contaminated food, water, or just close contact, people touching. It is, um, I have notes because I'm not a fucking scientist. How am I supposed to know this off the top of my head? A lot of big words. I had to Google search how to fucking pronounce some of this shit. Anyway, it's caused by Salmonella typhi, which by the way, sidebar, I've had Salmonella. It's not the vibe. It doesn't pass the vibe check. It's fucking awful. It's the shits, literally. Anyway, um, back then this disease was viewed to be <laughs> A disease of, quote, the crowded slums and tenements in New York. So basically this disease is looked at as, quote, and I hate saying this, I don't like it, I don't agree with this at all, but it's looked at um, a disease, quote, poor immigrants get from their living situation. They're basically all forced into these overcrowded homes that they're trying to pass as kind of like apartments. It's very interesting but they're all crammed in these homes and it's believed that poor sanitation and hygiene is what's happening in these homes. People aren't washing their hands, they're not showering, um, everything is contaminated, that's just what people believe is happening. So it's looked at as something that only poor people get, which is fucking disgusting. So imagine when a rich ass fucking banker on Oyster Bay has an outbreak in his vacation home. 
Now, all of a sudden, it's taken seriously and it's a fucking scandal. Now, I'm not gonna get into this, into how this disease affects you because we're cooking and that's kind of gross. If you wanna look it up, I would highly suggest you look it up. Um, I will say that it starts out kind of like the flu and it takes about three weeks to get you, if you know what I, if you know what I mean. Um, the mortality rate is between one, in, one to three in 10, so kind of high. Now, you have to imagine we're talking about a time when washing your hands was not like a normal practice. This is the early 1900s. It's not like how it is now in 2020 where we're using hand sanitizer every five seconds and washing our hands for over 20 seconds every fucking hour. Well, most of us are. Some of you aren't. And if you aren't, I don't like you. This whole episode is dedicated toward you. You're not gonna watch it, but it makes me feel better that I'm calling you out because you're fucking typhoid Mary. Nasty. In 1900, this disease was believed to have killed about 35,000 Americans. Now, this was such an issue back then because there was no cure, no vaccine, and antibiotics weren't a thing yet. Not that they even knew that antibiotics could have helped this at that time. Sound familiar, guys? Are you putting it together? Are you one plus one in the fuck out of this? Thank you. So the landlord of this vacation home where the outbreak happened fucking loses his shit. Completely just goes fucking bananas over this. Now, he's not going bananas because there's people in his vacation home sick and dying. No, no, no. He thinks that he's not going to be able to rent out the vacation home ever again. This was back when someone got sick with something like typhoid fever anything they were around or touched got burnt to the ground they fucking velveteen rabbit the shit out of everything which by the way super random sidebar did any of you guys get that book like read to you at a young age and then like you were afraid to tell your parents you had the flu because they like you thought that they were gonna like burn all your toys because that was a fear i had like way past needing to have it like till I was 12, I was like, fucking, I don't think you're going to burn my WrestleMania wrestle buddies. Fuck that. No, I don't have a cold. No, I was actually really scared of that. And it's kind of weird. Maybe like, if you're going to read that book to your kids, be like, but we don't do that anymore. I don't know. Or burn their toys. I don't know. I'm not telling you how to raise your kids. I don't give a fuck. So back to the story. The landlord then calls in Dr. George Soper. Now, Dr. George Soper is a quote, sanitation engineer. Do I know what that means? No. Do I like to think of it as like a one man CDC of the 1900s? Yes, and it makes me more comfortable. So, this man, basically at this point in time, his entire job revolves around typhoid fever. He investigates outbreaks, the causes of it, what it does to your body, how it's like transferred from person to person. It's his whole life, right? So he goes into this home. He tests absolutely everything, every room, everything he can, and it's all coming back negative. That's when he decides to look into whoever cooked two weeks before. Now, this takes two weeks before symptoms start showing. Again, does it sound familiar? He finds out that an Irish woman who was known to also have worked in other homes where there were typhoid fever outbreaks was cooking in this home. He finds out by going from family to family doing his research that she was leaving just trails of ill and dead people and not really doing anything about it. And I think it's kind of hilarious because the way like articles and Wikipedia and everything talks about this, they make it sound like she's in there fucking cooking and then typhoid fever happens and she's like, peace out, bitches. Like, she don't give a fuck. As soon as people get sick, she fucking laters out of there. She's like, mm, have fun. Now you're wondering who the fuck is this bitch? Well, this is 40 year old Irish immigrant Mary Mallon or how we're gonna refer to her for the next however many fucking minutes this chicken takes to cook, Typhoid Mary. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of the chicken, it started to boil, so I set a timer for 25 minutes. Now, we're not gonna be completely done cooking the chicken at that point, but we're gonna boil it so, again, nobody gets fucking salmonella typhoid fever shit up in this apartment, because I ain't no typhoid Mary. I washed my hands before that. Did I wash my I washed my hands before I did this. So back to it. Typhoid Mary, I know it's not nice to call her that, but you're gonna agree with me by like the end of the story, don't worry. Typhoid Mary migrates to the US at the age of 15 and she lives with her aunt and uncle in New York. Now, the only job that she can get that pays really well at this time is being a cook. So she goes into these different houses and she is their cook. She fucking meat and potatoes it up for them. So Dr. Soper goes all PI on this bitch, right? And he decides he's gonna start stalking her. Now, after stalking her, he finally tells her, like, girl, you are fucking spreading this disease. She is like, yo, you need to fuck off. Get away from me. I'm not sick. Now, it's said that when George Soper, Dr. Soper, told her this initially, his bedside manner was that of an angry man seeing people die. He wasn't happy about it. So he's kind of yelling at her, like, you're spreading this shit. Now imagine you're a 40 year old immigrant woman who's been cooking to make ends meet and this doctor that you have no proof he's a doctor just starts screaming at you that you're killing people. I probably would have done the same thing she did. She's like, you need to fuck off and you need to get away from me. He then tells her that she needs to give him samples of everything. I know, it's kind of gross. But naturally, she's like, get the fuck out of here. And she chases him away with a giant kitchen fork. Now, if that's not an image you appreciate, I don't get you. So she chases him away with this giant kitchen fork. And he decides, okay, we're not going to go that route. I'm going to go all investigator on her. So investigator on her, invest detective on her. You know what I fucking mean? Anyway, he finds out that in the past five years, Mary has worked for eight families. Seven of these families had typhoid outbreaks. You got to see like the connection, girl. Now, this is a bigger deal than it seems because without even knowing it yet, Dr. Soper just found the very first asymptomatic carrier, carrier of typhoid fever in the United States asymptomatic, an important word that a lot of you need to fucking learn. That's how you are not sick, but you give it to other people. Do we yet see the connection? Because I've yet to say the words COVID-19, but I feel like I need to now. Now, seven of these families had outbreaks. I'm not going to go into the story of each of them. If you want to look that up, do it. I don't have enough time. This chicken's almost fucking done. And we got to fucking put the sliders together. All that good shit. Now, it's determined that Typhoid Mary was passing this disease by not practicing proper hygiene when preparing food. She wasn't washing her hands or, like I did to the chicken before I put it in the boiling water, washed it, right? She's not doing any of that. Now, I know a bunch of you fucking anti-COVID believers and anti-maskers are going to come for me on this because you're going to say, well, wasn't the temperature she was cooking her food like it would totally kill the disease? You would think, right? but not for the homemade ice cream she was making these families. It was her famous homemade ice cream with chopped raw peaches. Picture her dirty hands just cutting raw peaches, just putting it in the air. I, I can just see her like massaging ice cream with her bare hands. Cochina. That's probably not how it happened, but that's how I like to see it. So now that we've talked enough about contaminated food and you're really in the mood to eat, our chicken has been boiling for about 25 minutes. So if you're like me, you're kind of nervous about cooking chicken, you don't wanna give anybody salmonella, or maybe you do, I don't know, I don't know your home life. Um, you can just take a knife in there, cut it open, make sure there's no pink. You wanna make sure that your chicken is fully cooked when you do this. Don't be fucking weird and eat fucking medium rare chicken. <laughs> That was a burp. But now that our chicken has been boiling and it's fully cooked, we're gonna get a set of tongs. 
and a large bowl and we're going to take our chicken out from the boiling water and place it in this bowl like so see this is a cooking show it's not just true crime lol make sure you turn off your boiling water because i never do that and it's kind of weird so now we've got our boneless skinless chicken breast all up in here we are going to because we're not typhoid mary and we practice safe fucking cooking put some gloves on you don't have gloves you don't want to do this Look, if your loved ones trust you enough, don't do it. Not only these, we're also going to get two large forks and we're just going to go in and shred the fuck out of this chicken. Now, once our chicken is shredded to our liking, you can use your glove hands. If you didn't like using the forks, do whatever you feel like to fucking shred your chicken. I'm not here to tell you how to do that. We are going to take a pan like so and put it on medium low heat. We're gonna want it pretty low because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this chicken in there with those same seasonings, salt, pepper, garlic, and a shit ton of your favorite barbecue sauce. Now, we really like sweet baby rays in this house. If you don't fucking like it, use whatever barbecue sauce you want. Just make sure that you're soaking that fucking chicken in this barbecue sauce. Now, we're gonna put that on a pretty low heat setting and just let that barbecue sauce soak into the chicken for about 10 to 15 minutes. Don't fucking touch it. If you maybe wanna stir it around once or twice, add some more barbecue sauce, but don't overwork this bitch, okay? Work smarter, not harder. The New York City Health Department has now gotten involved. Mm. Like, Mary is freaking out at this point. She's so pissed. And she's like, no, I'm fine. I'm not sick. Fuck quarantine. I would never do that. Do you see what you sound like? Do you see how gross you are? Now, at this point, they call in badass Dr. Sarah Josephine Baker. And Mary thinks now that this is just getting personal. They're all coming for her because she's an Irish immigrant. And she's right, at that time, they treated immigrants like shit. Irish immigrants in New York in the early 1900s, they treated them awful. But in this particular situation, Mary is killing people and spreading a disgusting disease because she's not practicing proper hygiene. So, Dr. Sarah Josephine Baker is finally like, fuck this, we are going to take Mary into custody. So in 1907, Mary is arrested as a public health threat. Now, she, it takes five policemen and Dr. Badass to restrain her, to arrest her. <clears throat> At one point, Dr. Josephine Baker just sits on her. She's like, bitch, I'm just gonna plop on you. Fucking, fucking. I'm gonna do that when I don't want somebody to leave. She's gonna be like, I'm sitting on you, bitch. So they arrest her and they take her to the Willard Park Hospital. This is where she's forced to finally give all of those samples that we're not gonna talk about. Now at this point in the hospital, fucking Typhoid Mary admits to not washing her hands or practicing any type of safe hygiene. I know, fucking cochina, disgusting, I don't like it. So now it is believed that this bitch really doesn't get it. Like, she's just being like, fuck all of you. So the New York Health Department says, fuck you back. And she is sent to North Brother Island, which is just off of Manhattan. And this is an island full of people with just awful diseases. We're talking like leprosy, things like that. It's just where they go to quarantine them when they just continue to pass it. So now she's a prisoner that's forced into quarantine. They find that the source of the typhoid is actually in her gallbladder. That's the center of the disease. So they go to her and they're like, hey, this shit is in your gallbladder. Let's just take your gallbladder out and you can practice safe hygiene. You can wash your hands. Don't be a cook anymore. 
and you're like you'll be able to go free she's like first of all fuck you you're not taking my gallbladder out number one number two if i get out of here i'm gonna cook again that's just what it's gonna be so they're kind of at a loss at this point now this is where she gets the nickname typhoid mary the journal of american medical association calls her that in their latest article oh no typhoid mary spreading disease you can just imagine how much this fucking pisses her off so now she doesn't want to like do what they say at all she's kept there for two years and 11 months and she is released in 1910. Now, when she's released, they get her a job as a laundress. Now, a laundress makes about $30 a week less than a cook, which at that time, that's a lot of fucking money. Imagine going from making $50 a week to $20 a week. What the fuck is she supposed to do? Now, also while being a laundress, she wounds her arm. They don't say how, but she fucks up her arm and she's not able to work for six months. So after the six months when her arm heals, she says, I'm just gonna go back to being a cook. She continuously changes her name and her job so that you can't catch her. She always has a different last name and she's hopping from place to place cooking. Now our chicken is about halfway done. I'm gonna go in and stir and maybe add a little bit more barbecue sauce so it soaks in. So Mary, now that she's back to being a cook, is obviously spreading this shit absolutely everywhere. She's spreading this shit everywhere, but in 1915, five years later, there's a huge outbreak of typhoid fever at the Sloan Hospital for Women's Maternity Ward, right? So who do they call in when there's a huge outbreak? Enter back in, Dr. Soper. You know our guy. He starts investigating it and can't really find any leads, but then the other staff members are talking about the cook. He fucking identifies her by her description, then goes in and finds her handwriting there. Remember when he went all PI and stalked her? He knew her handwriting and everything. He was able to compare it. Oh my God, Typhoid Mary is fucking back. So, Obviously, at this point, they know it's her. It breaks in the news. She, like, just fucking, she's like, I'm out, later days, bye. The police catch her at this point. It's fucking 1915. They can catch you. Fucking, what are you gonna do? Now she is sent back to North Brother Island, and she's going back into harsh, harsh quarantine. She spends the next 23 years as a prisoner in forced isolation. Not a lot comes out about her during this quarantine. It's pretty quiet. News kind of dies. People start understanding the proper precautions they need to take when it comes to typhoid fever. But what's really funny to me is that it said at one point, Mary on this island was actually working in the lab. She was working um, with like cleaning and preparing like stations for pathologists she was also working on um like helping them record things and stuff she was just in the lab like fucking typhoid mary was in the lab fucking gross imagine on this island of disease So now it's been about 10 minutes that our chicken has been sitting on a low heat with that barbecue sauce soaking in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our King's Hawaiian rolls, I'm taking four, and I'm just gonna slightly toast them in a skillet. Remember that when you're cutting these open, you want to use a serrated bread knife. Don't be weird and not do that, it's very important. <laughs> So now I have my King's Hawaiian rolls toasted, my chicken's fucking just swimming in barbecue sauce, and I've cut my pickles into little tiny pickle chips to throw on these sliders. And now I know what you're wondering, Johnny, how does this fucking story end because you won't shut up? Well, at this time, everyone that is asymptomatic 
with typhoid fever is allowed to walk the streets like everyone else in New York because they're taking proper precautions. They're washing their hands, they're not becoming cooks everywhere, they're not fucking trying to hurt people. I'm not saying that Typhoid Mary was trying to hurt people, but I am saying she was being rather ignorant to the fact that she could be killing people. Sound familiar? Sorry, I keep saying that because I'm seeing like so many of you guys just fucking out partying, like just partying like crazy right now. And if you're one of those people that's like partying or not wearing a mask or fighting it, I want to end this video really quick with just saying from the bottom of my heart, from the heart of my bottom, fuck off. Truly. Anyway, so to end this story, I'm going to say, in 1938, our beloved Typhoid Mary dies of pneumonia at the age of 69. The autopsy shows that all along, yeah, there was um, live typhoid, whatever it is, uh, salmonella typhi, in her gallbladder. It was there the whole time. If she just would have had it removed and followed proper precautions, none of this would have happened to her. We're also gonna start putting these sliders together and I'm gonna tell you the ending of this fucking story. So, we are going to take our pickles on each of the bottom of our Hawaiian rolls. A fair amount. I love pickles. If you don't love pickles, I can't help you. Always steal one for yourself. Now, it is thought that under the name Mary Mallon, she infected around 51 people and three to five of those people died. Now, funny story, that's just with the name Mary Mallon. How about those five years that she was using a million different other names? People don't really know exactly how many people she infected and how many of them died. That's why some people say she was a serial killer. I think she was the ultimate Karen and it pisses me off. Do you think she would have been a Republican? I feel like she would have been a Republican. Maybe not, because she was an immigrant. They're really shitty to immigrants. Anyway, as I put the final touches on our sandwiches, we're gonna talk about what happened to North Brother Island. Now, North Brother Island was later used as kind of a rehab facility um, for troubled teens, fucking, when meth started to become a thing all around, it's what it was. Um, it was abandoned in 1963 and now is considered like a, like a bird sanctuary. That's where all the birds go off in Manhattan. That is if you believe birds are real. Some people don't, it's whatever. I'm just taking, you probably can't see me, that's great. I don't have a very good camera system, but I'm just taking the chicken and placing it on top of the pickle on the fucking slider. Then we're gonna add on the fucking slider. Then we're gonna add our cheese right after. So it is no longer an area where you can go and quarantine people with diseases, unfortunately, because I would be fucking sending them your way if you're still being one of those fuckers that's not getting it. And I hope that maybe you watch this and maybe you understand now why it's such a big deal that what you're doing and killing people is bad. Don't be a typhoid Mary. Now, just to finish these off, I'm gonna take that sharp cheddar cheese Put it on my warm chicken so that it melts nicely on each one of these sliders. I'm gonna close them up and we're done. So. So here's our finished product. I hope we had a really good spooky Sunday dinner. I hope you make these and pair them with a nice side dish. I didn't feel like fucking doing that. And I hope maybe you made that slaw I told you about but didn't teach you how to make. Most importantly, I hope that you fucking learned a lesson today about Typhoid Mary. We're gonna get more into like murdery true crimes as things go on, but I thought that this was super important for us to talk about because I keep calling you guys those names and you don't get why. Also really funny, just between you and I, whoever's watching this, this is my second episode I filmed. I filmed the first one and it was a complete tragedy. One day it's gonna come out, or at least the bloopers are, and you're gonna fucking judge the shit out of me. It's gonna be great. But I hope you join me for more of these. They're gonna come out maybe every Sunday, maybe every other Sunday. 
may be lazy and I'm just gonna end up being on Monday. I also really like Thursdays. I don't fucking know, but they're gonna be a thing. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed being here. And I hope you continue to watch. And remember, uh, fucking spooky Sunday dinners. True crime and dine. Thank you for watching spooky Sunday dinners. I am still singing. Still can't afford a theme song. Blah, blah, blah.